With the RetroCart design files now finally available for download, I thought it would be a good time to take a look at the origins of the project, how it works, and most importantly, how you can add RetroCart support to your own CyberDeck. So my CyberDeck is based on a VTEC Precomputer 1000 circa 1988 or so. And like many of the educational computers of the era, it had its own cartridge format. Around the halfway point in developing my CyberDeck, I thought it would be cool to make the cartridge functional. And at first I thought that would be pretty easy because the, the cartridge connector is actually on its own board here. In theory, you could take this off, wire this into the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi, maybe use four pins for USB, and actually reuse all the original hardware. Now, if we take a look inside the cartridge itself, you can see we have the female edge connector here, the PCB, and of course the ROM chip. Now my idea was to just salvage the connector and come up with a new PCB that would have either custom electronics or perhaps play host to a USB flash drive. And I think that idea would work, and honestly, it'd be cool to see somebody try but in the end, it would have been a lot of work, a lot of custom manufacturing, and I wasn't thrilled with the idea of having to source original cartridges for the connector and the case. So rather than trying to track down more of these original cartridges, I came up with a 3D printed design that was the, more or less the same size and shape as the original VTEC. But instead of having a custom circuit board inside, I could just put a standard USB flash drive. After a few revisions, I eventually came up with my own design that was inspired by the original VTEC cartridge and would still fit in the opening on the pre-computer, but was optimized for size and printability. While initially designed with small flash drives in mind, I eventually expanded the concept to include Wi-Fi adapters and even microcontrollers. With the design of the cartridge completed, I turned my attention to the deck. I came up with a bracket that would hold a USB extension cable at the appropriate position. While it took a little fiddling to get the angle right, once everything was lined up properly, inserting a cartridge provided a very satisfying clunk. It was around this point that I posted the first pictures of my build to the CyberDeck Discord. Since there had already been some discussion going on about coming up with a standardized cartridge format, it didn't take long before people started asking if I'd be willing to share my designs. And I was happy to do it, but the problem was that the cartridges weren't any good without something to insert them into. So what I essentially did was recreate the VTEX cartridge slot, complete with a modified version of the USB extension bracket I made. The idea being that you could take this whole module and easily integrate it into your own CyberDeck design. All you need to do is pop a rectangular hole into the side of your deck and bolt it in. To date, there's at least one other CyberDeck out in the wild that's using my RetroCart, and a few more are in the works by members of the community. With a little luck, hopefully one day down the road when things get back to normal, We'll be able to get a few of these machines together in the same room and actually be able to swap cartridges between them. Now technically, all you need to do is print out the ready-made STL files I've released and you're ready to go. But knowing how important customization is in the CyberDeck community, I built several parametric features into the RetroCart design. Whether you just want your setup to look a little bit different, or need to spin up a cart for a new piece of hardware, the OpenSCAD Customizer allows you to easily tweak several aspects of the design without having to dig into the actual source code. Alright, first things first. By selecting objects, we can see that currently nothing is enabled for rendering. Clicking this first option will show us a basic cartridge using all the default parameters. If we then select cart options, we can see the parametric variables. There's a slider for cartridge length that lets you go down to 40 millimeters and all the way up to 100 millimeters. There are also options for the side grips, which are on by default, a bottom grip, which is closer to the VTEC original. And if you're going to do something with an antenna, there's an option to put a little cutout in the back. Once you're satisfied with the changes, hitting F7 will allow you to export the design to an STL. You can also customize the cartridge slot itself. We can simply disable the cartridge and enable the slot rendering. Once again, by selecting slot options, we can see the variables that we can adjust. The first variable allows you to change how deep the cartridge slot will be. Now the other two variables are used to control the height and width of the opening for the USB extension cable 
And if you notice, these sliders allow for a much finer grain control because you really want that to be as snug as possible. And just like before, when you're happy with the changes, hit F7 to export your modified design to an STL file. I hope you found this brief retro car introduction interesting. If you'd like to know more, the project is currently available on both Hackaday IO and Thingiverse, where you can find the customizer compatible version of the open SCAD source code, as well as a selection of ready to use cartridge designs. In the near future, I plan on putting the full source code up on GitHub, where I'd be more than happy to accept pull requests for new cartridge designs from the community.